Hello and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. I'm the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about Market America. At a glance, it already reminds me of Amway where they've got a little bit of everything, cosmetics, personal care, jewelry, health and nutrition, internet and financial services, you name it, they seem to have it. I'm not saying that a company that has had its hand in everything is doomed to fail or be terrible, but if one single MLM is literally trying to provide 12 different services, I'm already quite skeptical about how they can maintain the quality of any of them. I guess that's what we're here to find out though. So let's dive in. We'll start with the question, who is Market America? According to their Inc. profile, Market America was founded in 1992 by James Ridiger in Greensboro, North Carolina. Market America claims that JR's idea and vision was to change the world, which I mean, seems like a pretty dramatic way of describing a company that's been described as a glorified, overly expensive CVS, but I guess you could say it's changing the world in some way, I guess. Their site also states that shop.com as well as Market America Worldwide are leveling the playing field by quote, giving the power back to the consumer and helping everyone convert their spending into earning with a revolutionary new concept known as shopping annuity. They also claim to be empowering entrepreneurs and evolving into a global phenomenon. We'll see more of these buzzwords that don't actually reveal anything in just a moment. To no one's surprise, J.R. Rittinger is a former Amway distributor, so that could explain the incredible similarities between the two. One source even claims that a high school athlete from a middle-class New Jersey family, Rittinger has spent his career in direct sales. He was studying for a graduate degree in biology when he signed up as a salesman for one of the biggest and most criticized multi-level marketers, Amway. He went on to become a direct sales consultant. According to the North Carolina Attorney General's office, he was involved with running American Gold Eagle, a Greensboro-based multi-level marketer that sold gold and silver coins. Authorities in several states shut down the company in 1990 to 1991. No one was charged, but company founders, David and Martha Crow went on to found a gold-based scam that landed them in prison for fraud after they were arrested in Key Largo. In 1992, Rittinger, his wife, and her brother, Mark Ashley, now chief operating officer, launched Market America in their Greensboro basement. It's such a shame that he went from potentially doing some incredible things in the world of biology only to create an Amway clone. Even so, I wanted to know why Rittinger thought that Market America was going to change the world and what Market America was even founded on. I happened to find a blog by him on Market America's 25th anniversary where he talked about the unfranchised business. I've never really heard an MLM use that term before. A franchise business is of course where a business owner licenses its operations and products, but according to Rittinger, they are an unfranchised business. His blog explains. Let me pull the curtain back and explain what the unfranchise really is and what the unfranchised business really means. This includes why we have great products and an unparalleled opportunity for supplemental income and what drives that income basically the why behind everything we are and do. It is easily forgotten when everything is working. However, not building on a solid foundation of principles and beliefs that created our success and preserving that foundation for continued success is the first sign of decline. The rest of the blog, to be quite frank, loses me entirely. Rittinger tries to explain his business model, this unfranchised system that JR claims to have invented. There's four cornerstones to this new revolutionary business plan. One is the MPCP, a new compensation plan. Two is how he claims they are a product brokerage company. Three is that they're all about systemization and room for creativity. And four is all about computerized marketing. And look, this is just an MLM without the franchise title. Rittinger is trying to make their system sound different, but I swear when you read these cornerstones over and over and over and every single time it sounds like smoke and mirrors, like a bunch of buzzwords just thrown together to imply that they're doing something different. It's, they're just really nothing more than Amway Jr. So you can see what I'm talking about. Here's how JR distinguishes themselves from a traditional MLM. He writes, systemization. This is what the unfranchised system is about. It eliminates the problems of confusion and lack of support or uniformity. There is only one way of doing things, well-defined best practices. There is still plenty of room for personal flair, creativity, and color, as long as it does not change the system. 
Things can be added, improved, but if it is good enough for one, it has to be good enough for all. And the corporate team, executive sales team, and advisory council determine that, and it needs to be approved by me. Otherwise, we do not really have a uniform duplicate system of franchise concept as the unfranchised business. Without it, it reverts back to the MLM or networking, which I call the way of the week or month, and everyone doing things differently causes confusion. These practices prevent the GMTSS being an effective, uniform, standardized worldwide training, marketing, and support system. It also leads to underground field systems that may provide regulatory law or become an abusive profit center like selling seminars, rallies, books, tapes, audios, subscriptions, and other information. They, meaning the leaders in network marketing without an unfranchised system, make more on those training materials and income than the actual products and company compensation plan. It becomes a flea market or it results in segregation of groups to protect the upline kingpins kingdom of subjects. You have to be blessed or knighted to participate in the profits. So it fundamentally is a caste system and hypocritical. So it's just an MLM with everyone on the same page. It's an MLM, but people don't make money off of training materials and everyone, very generally speaking, sells the same way. That doesn't make them not an MLM. Their business model sure as hell doesn't sound revolutionary to me. One source also states that Rittinger and his wife, Loren, have adamantly denied being similar to Amway. Reportedly, Market America has 100,000 distributors who pay $600 in startup fees and about $150 a month to stay active in the company. Each salesperson is expected to recruit two more. Other sources have the numbers a bit different, even if the outcome is the same. One reads, Market America is the latest and most sophisticated incarnation of multi-level marketing, that controversial business scam that exploits the get rich quick dreams of every red-blooded American. The basic scam is that members of Market America who want to become independent distributors or unfranchise owners pay a fee for the right to sell products such as vitamins, makeup, herbal tonics, and kitchenware. They also get the right to recruit other independent distributors, fellow victims. This upfront fee is part one of the Market America scam. Then there's also the money they gain when victims sell their overpriced products often to themselves. This is part two of the Market America scam. People interested in becoming a Market America distributor pay a startup fee of $399, along with monthly payments of $129. Representatives who are independent contractors are also required to spend $130 to $300 on Market America products offered on shop.com. Distributors are also required to attend seminars and training events, which cost between $20 and $200. Many people spend thousands on these seminars and other fees. Well. That sure sounds like an MLM to me, an expensive one to join too. Even so, whether or not they have a fantastic new unfranchised model, let's see if it works and how it serves their distributors. We're going to start by taking a look at some of their products and we're going to start with the dietary supplements they introduced in 1993, early in the company's history, Isotonics. Their website reads, Market America's isotonic supplements are scientifically advanced formulas designed to give your body the maximum benefit from vitamins and minerals. Isotonics offers a complete array of products designed to fit your needs. With the Isotonics Daily Essentials Kit, you can be sure that you're giving your body the essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients it needs thanks to four essential supplements, Isotonics OPC3, Isotonics Multivitamin, Isotonics Activated B Complex, and Isotonics Calcium Plus to promote long-term health and optimal nutrition. Market America's e-commerce site shop.com sells these for about a dollar a serving and calls it an isotonic capable dietary supplement. There are a ton of health claims on their site as well as under the benefit list, which in part reads, The most powerful antioxidant supplement on the market today provides complete antioxidant protection, combats free radicals, demonstrates anti-inflammatory activity and promotes joint health, helps maintain healthy cholesterol levels, helps maintain healthy circulation by strengthening capillaries, arteries, and veins, promotes, supports healthy blood vessel dilation, helps promote, support cardiovascular health, helps maintain joint flexibility, helps reduce mild menstrual cramping and abdominal pain. There's many, many more on the list, but of course, none of them have been evaluated by the FDA. 
Even so, though the supplement industry is absolutely crooked and underregulated, the point of this product is to see if they actually help people. I looked to see if there were any clinical trials with isotonics as well, since you know you figure if you're making claims like this, they'd at least have some sort of evidence to back it up. One study read, the purpose of this study is to determine if a particular flavonoid supplement called Isotonics OPC3 taken on a daily basis will improve the function of arterial vessels. Arteries normally constrict after eating a high fat meal. This study will examine the potential of the OPC3 to lessen this constriction response. Approximately 25 people will be involved in this research project and participation will last for 10 weeks. Now, 25 people is an incredibly small sample size and 10 weeks isn't exactly going to tell us any long-term effects either. However, strangely, though recruitment was completed over a decade ago, there's no results posted whatsoever. Atrium Health, the sponsor of the study, doesn't seem to have anything about isotonics on their website either. Isotonics claims that numerous studies have been conducted on vitamins and minerals and that much is true. And I talk about the studies relating to supplements in other episodes, but it's not anything particular for isotonics itself. What's even more incredibly frustrating about this is that there's a massive list online of studies that supposedly validate this product, the Isotonics OPC3. But from what I can tell, not a single one is actually about isotonics itself. I went elsewhere and did find one that suggested their liquid formula is faster acting than a comparable capsule or tablet, but that's like kind of about it. Otherwise, all of them seem to be about the health claims and benefits Isotonics makes, about inflammation, about all of this stuff, about pine bark of a tree, about chemicals found in grapes, like things of that nature. It's not to say that the studies aren't valid, simply that they just aren't about isotonics as a brand specifically. So referencing them as though they're proof feels wildly irresponsible to me. The reviews on Amazon and naturally their website are pretty positive, but the consumer lab tells a completely different story and their website reads, On February 12th, 2020, the FDA sent a warning letter to Market America Incorporated for failure to submit serious adverse event reports about two of its products as required by federal regulation. The company received two reports following serious adverse events, but did not submit the proper forms. On March 15th, 2018, Market America received a complaint after a consumer was hospitalized for becoming winded, experiencing vertigo symptoms, and inability to walk after using the company's TLS nutrition shake. The consumer required six weeks of physical therapy to regain the ability to walk. On January 28th, 2019, a complaint reported hospitalization due to abdominal pain, constipation, vomiting, dizziness, itching of skin, weakness, shaking, insomnia, chills, headache, tingling and numbness, and cramps after one week of using the TLS 21 day challenge kit, which includes the products TLS Nutrition Shakes, Isotonics OPC3, NutraClean seven day cleansing system, and TLS Core. Adverse reaction complaints do not prove that a product was the direct cause of an illness or injury, but dietary supplement companies are required to report them to the FDA. In addition, some of the company's products were found to be misbranded because they do not comply with dietary supplement labeling requirements. These products include Isotonics OPC3, Heart Health Essential Omega-3, Isotonics Multivitamin, Isotonics Multivitamin with Iron, Isotonics OPC3, and Isotonics Activated B Complex. Does Isotonics work for some people? Apparently, according to reviews, it might, but I just can't trust a health branch of a company that doesn't even report side effects this serious and like still doesn't have a plethora, let alone any reliable, reputable studies on their specific products after nearly 30 years in business especially given the gigantic array of health claims. But of course, this is just one product from Market America. Ever since they took over shop.com around 2010 and became, as Rittinger calls it, a social shopping movement, they've gained a lot more products for us to look at. And there are quite literally millions of products. So we can't even begin to cover all of them today. Still, I decided to take a look at a few more of the brands they represent to see if there have been any other controversies we should be aware of that may not fall under the Market America name. For example, if you click under weight management, their brands are TLS Weight Loss Solution, as well as another brand called Choice. TLS being the one that apparently led to hospitalization of one customer, as well as other side effects I mentioned just a moment ago. 
It doesn't take more than some quick Googling to show that not only is their user rating on one blog literally at 32%, but even more consumers have complained about stomach aches and side effects from their products. It's overpriced and at $50 a bottle, it's just, I'm not convinced that these reviews are from anyone besides distributors. Besides, considering that their program recommends exercise and healthy dieting, two incredibly obvious and proven ways to lose weight, of course it'll work if you take those steps seriously. It doesn't mean the TLS bottle did that. Under health and nutrition, there is not only Isotonics as we've mentioned, but over a dozen other companies that Market America represents. One is, Curcumin Extreme, I don't know what the hell that is. One of their other supplements that falls under Nutrametrics. Curcumin is the primary bioactive substance in turmeric, according to my sources, and it has some anti-inflammatory properties. However, as one source states, Long-term studies that are more comprehensive in their assessments are needed. High doses of curcumin may produce nausea and gastrointestinal complaints. Use of curcumin with pepperine may cause adverse drug reactions as pepperine greatly increases intestinal permeability. The different formulations of curcumin have not all been tested for safety to the same degree. There are still new studies being done about turmeric and its benefits. So while turmeric and by extension curcumin may have health benefits, there hasn't been enough research done to really put stock in those claims. Market America also represents the brand Ultimate Aloe, seemingly jumping on the aloe product trend that I've mentioned here in a previous episode. There are studies about aloe vera out there, but the studies are typically in terms of aloe as a supplement are still pretty limited and do actually show some risk. As for their other brands, such as Motives Cosmetics and Laird Jewelry, it all just looks like the same crap to me. It's incredibly generic, overpriced, chuggy products that are mostly unoffensive and at times questionable. Like the tiny brush kit that I found is $45. It looks cute, sure. And you know, if it's worth $45 to you, that's fine. But it just, it just, it doesn't do it for me. The other problem I see here is obviously the shade range. It's incredibly pathetic. Uh, I only found one or two products that would actually be suited for someone with a slightly darker skin tone. And like, I got it. You're, I see the marketing here, like who you guys are targeting. Like it's pretty obvious. You didn't have to make it that obvious though. But for now, I'd like to focus on shop.com as a company in a bit more general terms. Do they deliver what they promise? How's their customer service? Well, according to some sites such as Trustpilot, they're doing just fine with a 4.4 star rating as of writing this. Strangely enough, the top review at present time from someone named KK says they have some of the best nutrition products in the world with the evidence to back their experience. Well, darling, where is that evidence? Aside from anecdotal evidence, I haven't actually seen anything that I could confidently present as proof. There's been some negative reviews about the customer service. The positive reviews don't say too much. And on other websites like SiteJabber, the experiences are largely negative. Strangely, but quite a few of these negative reviews seem to be about their wigs. And that's just something else I thought was interesting. Um, Another source states, the shop.com scam comprises of two parts. One, they, as in Market America, sell the same overpriced products they did before, but now online. Second, they refer potential visitors to other websites in exchange for referral commission. Shop.com did the first part because it saw the movement towards online and internet usage was increasing. So by shifting the branding to an online presence, it could tell victims that they were investing in their own online store. Of course, this wasn't even using their domain name and they didn't own the platform, so they weren't investing in anything other than giving money to Market America. The second part shop.com did was set up referral links. Its individual contractors would get visitors to their shop.com webpage and when they click through to buy something from Walmart or Macy's, that individual contractor would get a commission. This allowed shop.com to legitimize some part of their business since affiliate marketing, the practice of sending visitors to other websites in exchange for a commission is legit. This also allowed shop.com to make money by taking a percentage of these commissions. For example, if a merchant was offering 15% of sales, Market America could offer 10% to the individual contractor, the victim, and pocket the other 5%. What the individual contractors are usually unaware of is that they could directly partner with Walmart, Dell, et cetera, and earn the entire commission themselves. More deviously, Market America representatives boast to others how they have these great partnerships with firms like Walmart or Dell, when in reality, anyone with a website can fill out a form in Walmart and get even more commission. 
My massive issue here obviously is not only how Market America acts as if they're so much better than other MLMs, but the fact that they even emphasize how important recruitment is. No traditional legitimate business model that I've seen will ever require you to recruit others in order to make a living. They're an MLM, it's plain and simple. As such, they've had quite a few controversies they're familiar with. And so like we've seen in other MLMs, let's get into those. But before we do, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. All right, you guys know what time it is. It's time to talk about one of my favorite sponsors, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that delivers high quality fresh ingredients that are sourced directly from growers and delivered straight to your door in under a week. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items each week, including ready to eat meals, sandwiches, and even soups. And it's super easy to customize everything through their app to determine when you want a delivery, when you wanna skip a delivery, and what exactly you want in each delivery. I was really torn on a recent delivery because they had Kung Pao chicken and al pastor or pork, which I love both very much. So I decided to kind of get both anyway to try it out. I've never made either, but I hope I end up being really good at it and that they come out delicious because just looking at the photos on this app make me hungry. So if you want to get started with HelloFresh today, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash MLM14 and use code MLM14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, make sure to head over to hellofresh.com slash MLM14 and use code MLM14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. This episode is also sponsored by Canva. Now, you guys know I love Canva. I've been using them for years. And when they decided to finally start sponsoring the show, I was beyond psyched because they are still the program that I use to create my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. But what can Canva help you do? Well, they can do pretty much anything. They can help you create logos, t-shirt designs, YouTube thumbnails, uh, pretty much anything you could really need. It doesn't matter if you're a professional or just getting started. Canva Pro can help you boost you and your team's productivity and creativity. And Canva Pro has everything you need in one place, including a collection of over 75 million premium photos, videos, audio, and graphics. So design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now you can get a free 45 day extended trial when you use my promo code. Simply go to canva.me slash Mondays and get your free 45 day extended trial. That's canva.me slash Mondays, canva.me slash Mondays. Rittinger has had issues with his MLM being incredibly problematic and scrutinized, even from the early days of his company. For example, the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, filed a complaint against him in 1999. Their website reads, The Securities and Exchange Commission today, May 4th, 1999, filed a complaint in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia against Gilbert A. Zwetsch, 59, a former stockbroker from Spokane, Washington, and James H. Rittinger, 47, of Greensboro, North Carolina. Rittinger is president and CEO of Market America Incorporated, a North Carolina direct marketing company. The complaint alleges that the two defendants violated the anti-fraud and other provisions of the federal securities laws in connection with an unregistered distribution of Market America stock and other activities. Both defendants, without admitting or denying the complaint's allegations, consented to final judgments permanently enjoining them from future violations of the anti-fraud, securities registration, and reporting provisions of the federal security laws and requiring them to pay a total of more than two million in disgorgement, interest, and civil penalties. Both also agreed to orders prohibiting them from participating in any future offering of penny stock. The fraud was related to stock sales made on behalf of a Rittinger family trust. Apparently, shortly after the company was founded, Gilbert created shell companies that appeared to have securities that could be publicly traded, even though they had no appreciable assets. Rittinger's lawyer, Richard Hall, aided in the process of distributing unregistered Market America stock. The complaint talks more about shell shuffling, hiding money, putting it out again through proxies, inflating stock value. Honestly, all you really need to know is that Rittinger is a shady person with some incredibly shady behavior. He claims that he was simply naive and trying to find an easy shortcut, but I just don't see how in any way he could have thought this was a good idea. Personally, I feel that this showed Rittinger's true colors as he could have stepped down, but he's still the CEO as of writing this, so clearly the message has been sent that he can do whatever he wants with little consequence. Of course, the SEC wasn't the only one having issues with Rittinger, far from it. 
In 2004, Consumer Awareness Group President Robert Fitzpatrick said that based on the company's current numbers, they couldn't go on forever, and he did, in essence, call them a pyramid scheme. An article in the Miami Herald reposted by the Cult Education Institute reads, Robert Fitzpatrick, president of Consumer Awareness Group Pyramid Scheme Alert, calculated the company has run through at least 236,000 recruits since 1998, using figures in the company's 2000 annual report and 30% average dropout rate. This could not go on forever, he said. He also disputed the company's website claim that distributors can achieve financial independence. Fitzpatrick calculated the average sales per seller as $1,671 in 2000, or an average gross profit per seller of $835 if they mark up each item 50%. Rittinger said the suggested markup is 45%. How do you really make money then? By recruiting a downline of sales reps in pyramid fashion, he said. Rittinger said the company's growth is unlimited because it continually adds new products that can be sold to existing and new customers. Market America is not a full-time job for the vast majority of sales reps, Ashley said. About 70% are women who do it to earn a couple hundred dollars, he said. The article also states, Market America's exponential expansion hinges on a controversial business model known as multi-level marketing, where each sales rep is recruited to recruit others. In some cases, the system becomes a pyramid scheme when sales are largely based on self-consumption by new recruits who must recruit others in turn to buy the products. Rittinger takes pains to distance Market America from multi-level marketers, yet he knows that the company is technically considered one. We live with this stigma of having evolved from multi-level marketing, he said, but our model is based on accumulating customers. The company's 500,000 preferred customers are a key element of Rittinger's strategy. Besides placing monthly orders for products, these clients take umpteen surveys about products. Market America mines the data to come up with new merchandise that has a ready client base. Again, it's no wonder that they're basically just an overpriced CVS or Walgreens or whatever you wanna call it. This isn't anything new and it's something we've seen time and time again. Yet what's extremely frustrating about Market America is how dishonest they are about it. It's that blog that Rittinger put out there pretending that they're not like the other MLMs when on the whole, I see absolutely no differences. Naturally, Robert Fitzpatrick wasn't the only one criticizing them either. John M. Taylor, president of the Consumer Awareness Institute, has also spoken out against Market America. A 2011 Bloomberg article reads, certainly, like most MLM businesses, Market America has plenty of detractors. John M. Taylor, president of the Consumer Awareness Institute and MLM watchdog group, says that based on his study of more than 400 such firms, 99.6% of people who sign up as distributors wind up losing money. Taylor ascribes Market America's current success to it being in a typical stage of growth. What happens in these companies because of the endless chain of recruitment is that they get into a momentum phase where they grow rapidly, he says. And to avoid leveling off, they set up new products and go to new countries. Market America's consumers are their distributors ultimately, especially when every single one of them has to pay a minimum just to remain active. Again, I can't think of a traditional business model that would fire you unless you spent a certain amount of money at their store. Subscription-based services like Netflix, HelloFresh, Hulu, and phone services may require a minimum for a customer to continue receiving their product, but it's not as if employees have to buy them or spend a portion of their paycheck to remain employed. So why is it that an MLM can get away with this? There's so many things wrong with this business model, whether or not you believe it's revolutionary. Thankfully, in Market America's case, the law absolutely caught up with them in 2006. Now, Market America has had a few lawsuits to its name, so we'll start with the first one of note. In March 2006, plaintiff Steve Sawyer filed a lawsuit against Market America for yet another nasty habit of MLMs, not paying him for his work. In this case, however, Sawyer wasn't a distributor, but a consultant that was providing a service to the company. Not only can this MLM not pay their distributors, but even their regular employees. According to my source, Steve Sawyer, a citizen of Oregon, alleged that he worked as an internet sales manager for defendant. Plaintiff asserted that defendant failed to pay him $25,000 in bonuses and two monthly payments of $4,166.67 pursuant to an employment agreement signed by the parties. Plaintiff sought relief for breach of contract and violation of the wage payment provisions of the North Carolina Wage and Hour Act. 
And look, Rittinger is a multimillionaire with stupidly lavish levels of wealth. Like if you get that money, honestly, that's great. I can't say I'm happy for him considering that he's gotten it from an MLM, but he has $25 million into a Manhattan condo and his company makes hundreds of million dollars every single year. There's no excuse for this kind of behavior. If you say you're going to pay someone for work they did for your company, just do it. It's as simple as that. I've had cases plenty of times as a personal example where I've hired a new editor and the work just didn't pan out, but I still pay them that full amount because that's what I said. And they still did work regardless if I liked it or not. It just means I'm not gonna work with them again. It's really not that hard of a concept to grasp. Now in Market America's case, of course, there were tons of appeals and frustrations to this case. Market America tried to argue that since Sawyer is from Oregon, he's not subject to the North Carolina Wage and Hour Act. So Sawyer said, all right, fine. Then he sued them in 2008, seeking relief under the Oregon Wage Claim Act. A few random sources talk about how messy this got with debate over this being under Oregon or North Carolina, but it looks like this case was settled in 2010, though there's little on how the case ended. Another more infamous lawsuit took place in 2017. And this one gained a lot more press as it was a federal racketeering lawsuit. CBS wrote, the May 30 lawsuit brought by California residents Chuan Ji Yang and Ollie Lan accuses the Greensboro, North Carolina based company of violating the Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act and California state law. It claims the company targets Chinese American immigrants because they don't have regularly available legal channels to vindicate their legal rights. The suit also alleges Market America is counting on its representatives to sell its products to their friends and family in China, the world's most populous country. Yang and Lan, however, both lost money on Market America. They failed because they were doomed from the start by a Market America marketing plan that systematically rewards recruiting distributors over the sale of products, according to the 46 page court filing. Over 90% of Market America distributors average net losses. No persons except individual defendants and secretly placed individuals into the representative tiers of the company make any money. And this is giving me Herbalife vibes really, really strong, like with how they tend to target Latino communities. It's bad enough that so many people lose money with this company, and it's even worse that they pretend to be revolutionary when they're not, but then to target to immigrants is just like the cherry on top of this shit sundae. Yang spent $35,000 on products, seminars, and fees when he was a distributor between 2010 and 2016. Lan has been a distributor since December, 2015. Both Yang and Lan had difficulty making retail sales according to the suit. With a $7.3 billion valuation and a sales force of 180,000, Market America has operations in Canada, Mexico, Taiwan, China, Spain, and the UK, Singapore, and Australia. It vehemently denied the lawsuit's claims. Market America may have denied the claims, but many, many others have had these complaints. Truth in Advertising says this lawsuit was consolidated and stayed so temporarily suspended, whereas other similar lawsuits have been brought against them. In 2019, three plaintiffs filed against Market America alleging they're nothing more than a pyramid scheme. The lawsuit claims that Market America represents to distributors that they could earn a six-figure salary by selling their products and more importantly, by recruiting a downline. In actuality, there is no way to make money by product sales alone. You have to recruit people in order to make this work. The classic mark of a pyramid scheme. Market America has very little costs nor production requirements because it does not directly manufacture its own products, the complaint reads. Instead, Market America offers products from third-party manufacturers, but requires distributors of Market America to pay monthly fees just for the opportunity to sell these third-party products, the touchstone of a pyramid scheme. Distributors who the case says are doomed from the start are allegedly required to pay an initial startup fee of $399, followed by a monthly fee of $129. Additionally, each enrollee, according to the complaint, must spend at least $130 a month on shop.com, the website operated by defendants, in order to maintain enrollee status. The lawsuit attests that over 90% of Market America distributors lose money and only those at the top of the so-called pyramid are able to earn a lucrative salary and bonuses represented by the defendants. And it's the same complaints over and over and over again. These plaintiffs have lost thousands and thousands of dollars trying to make this work. One of them lost 7,000, one another was 10, and another was $35,000. 
So when distributors and higher ups say, oh, well, if you don't try and work hard, it won't work. I'd love to see the reasoning that they would give these individuals. As far as I can tell, this is still in the works. And while I'd love to think that they'll face some consequences for this, I'm doubtful they will. As for what Market America has been up to recently, they've had quite a few issues throughout 2020. Some have been related to COVID, others are about their income claims, some health claims, we've got a little bit of everything here and there. I highly recommend Truth and Advertising's page on Market America if you wanna stay up to date with them in more detail as things are probably gonna to continue to unfold through the end of 2021 and 2022. But according to their 2020 article, while Market America has so far escaped scrutiny from the FTC this year, it has not had the same luck with the FDA. In February, the agency sent Market America a warning letter over, among other things, its failure to report complaints it had received from customers who experienced serious side effects as a result of taking the company's supplements. One of the complaints that went unreported to the FDA detailed the need to be hospitalized for abdominal pain, dizziness, shaking, and chills one week into a 21-day weight loss challenge that included a supplement regimen. The FDA warning letter was addressed not to Rittinger, but to the company's president and chief operating officer, Mark Ashley, Lauren Rittinger's brother. Rittinger made some incredibly false income claims throughout the pandemic on his Twitter as well, which caused Truth in Advertising to send Market America a warning letter promising to notify federal regulatory agencies as well as the direct selling self-regulatory council specifically unless they took their income claims down. Market America did actually listen and address the deceptive marketing issue, though, as you can imagine, they're still being closely monitored. Market America may not have a current income disclosure listed. However, given everything we've read today, I'm pretty confident in that saying, you can't earn a living in Market America. All in all, while this MLM may not have potentially killed people like Herbalife, they're like the baby of Herbalife and Amway, if I had to explain it to someone. They can grow up to be a real monster one day too, if they continue to go unchecked. Hopefully something does come of this pyramid scheme lawsuit and just they face some sort of punishment, but I guess for now, we just have to wait and see. And as for today, that's where we're going to end this episode of Multi-Level Marketing. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you all so much for listening and watching. If you did enjoy this, make sure to subscribe, like, and follow so that you can stay up to date on all of the latest episodes. And if you wanna follow me on my social media, my Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Discord server, everything's Illuminati the way it's spelled. You guys know the deal. So thank you all so much for making it to another episode. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.